Well, hello, I hope this video finds you well. If you're someone who has been wanting to update their look, maybe you're new to makeup, maybe you have worn makeup for a while, but you still don't feel like your look is popping the way you want it to, then this is the video for you. I'm going to share what I would say the top four to five items that you need to make a basic beauty routine and that this routine won't cost you an arm and a leg. There'll be certain items I will call out in the video that would be important or I would be highly, highly encourage you to obtain a more mid to higher end product just based off of quality and its effectiveness. But everything else, it's pretty standard. You can go drugstore, you can go department store, you know, you can go real bougie if you want to, if that's what your thing is. But I want to give you the, the, the foundational items. When you have a good foundation, everything else just layers on well. And I don't mean your face, just in your routines. Oftentimes when people get into things that are new, they watch a bunch of videos, read a bunch of stuff, and then they go crazy ordering stuff or go like drunkenly into Ulta or Sephora and buying up the store. And oftentimes you need to look at what you have first and then figure out what do you really need based on your lifestyle, based on what you want to look like, because you don't need everything to create every look. So if this is something that you're into, stay tuned. All right, so the first thing out the gate is going to be your actual face, so your complexion. Foundation, concealer, powder are three items in that complexion area that I would, one, encourage you to purchase mid to high end because foundations that are formulated better typically range in that like mid to higher end range. Um, and when you're new to foundation, the worst thing is to have a foundation that oxidizes and turns orange on you, um, just doesn't have a good consistency, and therefore when your foundation's off, everything else is off. Like you could have bomb brows, um, your eyeshadow could be blended to the gods, but if your foundation is off, it's always going to be it's pretty, but the foundation's off. It just You've seen pictures where the foundation is like, there's a demarcation line between their face and their neck and such. Um, and for black women, especially or darker skinned women, that often happens because our bodies are different colors. And so there are different philosophies out there about how you should match your foundation. Some say you should, um, I would say one thing you shouldn't do is matching it to your wrist because that's going to be a total different color and it's not going to be anywhere near the structure here. Some say match your chop, like your jawbone area. Um, others will go into matching your actual chest or neck area to make sure that you have a good match. To me, it always depends. If I'm going to be fully out, like my neck is going to show and you can see the demarcation line, especially as we're getting into warmer months, it is best to do it from the neck up. Uh, and you may find yourself needing two foundations, kind of your summer spring shade and your fall winter shade. But your foundation, there are different types. There are sheer, medium coverage to full coverage. They come in liquids, they come in powders, they come in creams. Um, you name it when it comes to the foundation. I always suggest uh, probably more so a medium to full coverage foundation or medium buildable coverage. That way, if you want something a little bit sure, you can do a one coat and be done. Or if you want some more coverage, you are able to build upon it to make it a more full coverage foundation. I wouldn't suggest going after a full coverage foundation right off the back unless you are really, really comfortable with blending and manipulating that product onto the skin. Um, concealer. I would say something between a medium range concealer, maybe even a high end concealer would be optimal for coverage. Typical uh, concealers that you would want to have is one shade that's at least one to two shades 
lighter than your foundation color and then one to two shades darker than your foundation color. This is going to allow you to highlight, so like under your eyes, the bridge of the nose, around in here. Like these are areas typically people want to bring out, to pronounce, especially if you have, say, dark circles you're trying to cover. Um, and then areas that we're trying to potentially chisel is like down the nose on the sides, here in this cheek. We want that contoured look um, in the jawline. And you want those darker shades to kind of minimize. Like think of when you wear black, black slims. And that's what you should think of when it comes to that darker color. And then that lighter color is going to make something pop. It's going to be more pronounced. So that is your concealer. Um, shades and foundation brands that I like or foundation and concealer brands that I like, um, I love Pat McGrath when it comes to concealer. She can do no wrong with her concealer. It's foundations, my top three, and these have been top three for the past five years. Um, and they're actually all kind of in that medium to high end range. Um, Lancome's uh, Tene Adol, um, the Estee Lauder Double Wear, that is a full coverage girl. Even though she markets herself as a medium, I really do feel like unless you have a lot of hyperpigmentation you're trying to cover, it is pretty full coverage in one swoop. And then pretty much anything from NARS, um, their Sheer Radiance Glow, their um, Soft Matte, that's a new one, and there's another one that they have. But pretty much anything in the NARS family, face-wise, I'm happy with. For foundation, I used to be a loyal... Um, creamy concealer from NARS and then found Mother Pat and I saw the light <laughs> um, and I've never seen such a hydrating yet brings the pigmentation, brings the color for concealing like no, uh, no other than the Pat McGrath. So that's what I feel would be great. Um, if you're wanting to go something a little cheaper, ColourPop makes a pretty good one. Um, it takes a little bit of getting the right matches. That's another thing when it comes to more of the mid to mid range or say lower end range products, the color range, depending on what who you are, if you're someone on the fair end side, you might be fine. Like you'll be able to find your shade. Where I find that it can be a little bit of a stumbling block is for those who are in the more medium to dark and being able to have those nuances. Um, I find that cheaper products typically, when it gets to a certain color of the darker end, they just go neutrals or it's called cool tone. And unless you're a cool tone girl or neutral girl, you my warm tone, my golden undertone ladies, you oftentimes are having to mix shades and that's just too much. By the time you add it up, you might as well have bought you a nice medium to higher end foundation and moved on with your life. Last piece of the actual face is going to be your powder. Um, I really truly only have two powders and for that is me. I have the Buttercup, I believe it's, I'll put the actual name of the caption, but I like the butter uh, Buttercup a yellow powder that I use and then I use a Graptobian darker translucent powder and that's to cut the cheeks. I really don't use a bunch of powder. If you're someone on the oilier side, you may use those. But if you're someone, say, uh, dry, I wouldn't use it at all. And if I was more in the medium that kind of could be dry, could be a little bit oily, I only use it in areas where I'm really wanting to set longevity so when I conceal under the eye I'm going to put some powder um, here in the cheek area where I've contoured I'm going to use powder to set but other than that I like my face to be have some luminosity have a glow and when you put too much powder on you look a bit casket sharp so that's the number one area that you need for basic. All right, number two thing that you need in a basic beauty or makeup routine is going to be eyeshadow. The beautiful thing with eyeshadow, it can be used, uh, depending on the shade, it can be used as a blush, uh, it can be used as a contour shade, like it's endless options when you, you know, when you have your eyeshadows. I am one who loves to stick to matte 
shades and neutral tones for my beginners. They're a lot uh, more user friendly. It doesn't show up terribly if you haven't blended well. Um, and it just, it's just a lot easier to flow and apply. The more that you get comfortable with laying that paint on that eye, the more that you can make it comfortable with using different formulas like a shimmer, a glitter, um, that sort of thing. It can be a little bit not as user friendly and it can show up more. Um, but I'm just big on neutrals for everyday look. Neutrals are my girl. I'm, I am the queen of a neutral eye with a pop of color on my waterline. That just gives a little razzle dazzle. But you do not have to break the bank when it comes to your eyeshadows. I would say something more in a medium range. I like the Juvia's Place from, um, eyeshadow palettes. If you don't have issues with them as a brand, then to me, $15, $20 for a nice size palette that will probably last you until your grandchildren come around would be a really great investment piece. I often get them when they're on sale, so I have quite a few, but their Nubian palettes, I believe, are the ones that are the neutrals, and it's beautiful. Like they come in, they're all mattes. They come in a variety of um, nice, warm, and neutral shades. And the looks that you can create with those are very much versatile. And I like having those as a foundation. After that, if you want to get some color, then I'm always about trying out a color before making a big investment in it. So if it's a trendy color, I would potentially go with the NYX, um, something like that to get your feet wet in color. And then jump off into maybe purchasing maybe another Juvia's Place palette that has some colors that you are curious of trying. Um, I just recently picked up a Makeup Revolution palette because I noticed in my collection I am very much a neutral girl um, and I wanted some color. Spring is here and something has gotten into me to want color. And so I picked up this Makeup Revolution palette. It has a beautiful assortment of different colors like greens and blues, peaks and purples, things that I just don't have in my collection, but it was only $15. And I think it's like a 15 to 20 pan palette, very nicely made, something that I feel like if you're wanting to kind of diversify, it would be a great thing. Um, other things that come under the eye area aside of eyeshadow would be your eyeliner, your mascara, your lashes. You do not need to break the bank when it comes to eyeliner. Um, drugstore eyeliner will do you just fine. If you want a good gel eyeliner, my favorite even back in my makeup days was the Inglot Cream Liner. I think it's an 01, but it is the blackest of black. Like your soul, dark soul black. It is beautiful. It's super creamy. It lasts you for a long time. Um, and it's really easy to use. So that would be like, if I'm doing a cream liner, I'm more of a liquid eyeliner girl. I like a matte liquid liner. And the one that I have found is from Milani. And it's a matte black eyeliner. And I love it. I hate it liquid eyeliner but typically because it's very, it leaves this patent leathery shine. And I think it looks tacky. So having a matte liner just is beautiful. Uh, it's a felt tip. It just makes things applied super easy, especially for the beginner. Or if you're someone like myself who um, cannot draw straight, it just makes the process so much more forgiving. Um, lashes. You can hit up your Korean beauty supply store. You can hit up Walgreens when it's on sale. Get you some Ardell Wispies. Those are to me standard issue basic Betty eyelash that you can get, but it's going to get you comfortable with actually applying your eyelashes and getting comfortable wearing them before you go off and get something like what I have on today, these uh, real thick lashes. You have to be comfortable. Um, when you're learning how to apply your lashes, it's going to take some time. Best tip I can give you when you're applying it is make sure your lash glue has dried down a little bit to where it's tacky, so it's kind of sticky, and then apply your lash. I have a video on wing liner and eyelash application. I'll leave it in the cards, but it will be a good video for more details on how to do that. Uh, mascara, 
is something that you should be throwing away every three months. I don't believe in spending a lot of money on mascara unless you find a formula that you are just in love with and understand you need to throw it away after three months of use. If it's open three months, the clock starts ticking once you get the air to that actual tube. Uh, the worst thing is to have an eye infection because of your actual mascara. Uh, and don't ever share your mascara like it's never unless you have a clean wand and you've broken off the other wand that comes in the package originally then you can use it you know one swoop in and then tr use another clean spoolie if you're going that route but honestly you can get you some voluminous by l'oreal and black is black that's what a lot of makeup artists pro makeup artists use it's a wonderful mascara and heck, you can get it at Target. Sometimes you can get two packets, um, especially during the holidays. So do not spend the blow a bag on mascara. Like, it's just not necessary. Same thing with lashes. I know that some of these lashes out here have gotten extremely expensive. Um, I know the big popular are the, uh, the, I think it's the MM, the 25 MMs, the 50 MMs, these big, thick, wispy lashes. I would reserve those for once you're comfortable and can really apply a lash well comfortably before going into those because it it can be a little bit uh, take some work if you are a novice at your eyes. So an eyeliner you can go for the multitude of different colors. Um, I like having different color pencils because again you can just do a nice line of color under the waterline. It gives you a different little look. It definitely, when I do like a turquoise or a blue under the eye, it makes the girls have something, some comments. They like that. So you can use that as a layer of paint before putting a color that matches that or something you want to mix. Like you can get really creative. Um, and you can get pencils, you can get liquid, you can do whatever you want to do, but they do not have to be expensive. And that is all about the eyes. So that's number two that you need for basic routine. All right, the number three thing that you need for a basic beauty or makeup routine is going to be brows and contour and highlight. Now, I know those kind of seem all together and you're like, how do those connect? I mentioned in the eyeshadow that you can use your eyeshadows to contour and um, you can also use it as a brow powder, uh, especially if you get neutrals like browns and such. You can use those same very products on your brows and you can use it to contour out your cheeks. Um, depending on the shade of eyeshadow, it can also be used as a highlighter. You don't have to break the bank when it comes to a brow pencil. Um, my favorites used to be NYX's micro pencils um, just because they're super, super thin and it allows you to do very beautiful hair-like strokes. But I have, beauty supply store ones have done me well over the years and those are 99 cents. So it all depends on what you want to spend, but you don't have to break the bank. I've also used the Benefits uh, brow pencils. They're great, but I feel that they, if you're using them on a consistent basis, they go fast. Same thing with the MAC ones. I love them, but they go really, really quickly if you are using it on a daily. Uh, a tip is that you can also use, I would prefer to get a brow pencil that you can sharpen versus the automatics. I find with those, I can really get that brow the way I want to because I can sharpen it before each use of each brow, making it a very nice sharp point, and that sharp point is going to help make for precision. So that's your brows, does not need to be extreme. You can use concealer that you have from your face complexion to clean up your brows if you so feel like it, but you don't need to go extreme, trying to sculpt a whole new brow, um, unless you don't have any brows, then yeah, you may have to do a little work to make a brow there. Contouring, I would say, use, you can use your eyeshadow, you can buy a contour palette. You don't need to blow a bag on it either. Um, I just find when someone is new to the game of makeup, trying to go overboard with contouring and highlighting, you will end up looking a mess. And no one wants that. No one wants you to look a mess. You don't want to look a mess. I just know that you're watching this video. So use what you have first and then as you start to get comfortable, then if you want to splurge and get a, you know, dedicated 
um, contour highlight shade or um, color corrector palette. Um, Anastasia Beverly Hills makes one where it gives you um, a few concealers, you get your color corrector for your skin tone, and then darker shades to actually contour out the cheeks. So it's a cream product, and then you can set it with powder. That is something I encourage once you're more comfortable. But immediately, you don't have to do all that. Get yourself comfortable with applying your makeup and getting to know your face. And that way you really know what you're working with before you start trying to chisel out some stuff. So that is number three thing that you need for a basic beauty routine. Alright, the fourth and fifth thing that you will need for a basic makeup beauty routine is going to be some blush and your lips. Blush adds emotion as my friend, my best friend who is a very, really big makeup artist. It brings emotion to the face. Like it makes you look happy, awake, joyful, whatever you feel the need to have going on. Uh, there's cream, there's powders, uh, there's liquidy gels that are out there for blushes. Um, less is more. It's easier to add more to your cheeks than it is to take away because uh, you don't want to look a clown. Like, unless you're auditioning to be in the circus, you don't need, like, that boop boosh big old round cheeks. Like, you're not a baby doll. <laughs> unless you're going in costume, then go, go nuts. But if not, you just want a flush of color. Just something to highlight. Um, not too much. It just gives you that awakened look. You don't look so tired. Um, and blush, I've been seeing as trends. They're using it more to kind of drape the face kind of basically blushing and contouring all in the same kind of flow. Those when it comes to blushes, I would say if they're creams or if they're powders, a mid-range to higher end will be the best way to go. Cream blushes that I am loving are the Fenty cream blushes. I have one in a daiquiri and one in a strawberry daiquiri. Uh, they're just beautiful pinks and reds, beautiful cream. It's just gorgeous. You can use your fingers to apply it and it melts into the skin. Like it's beautiful. That those would be something that I would wear if I just wanted a, a light flush of color. And if I want a little bit more staying powder, I can always set those with a translucent powder or a blush that kind of uh, it comes close to that shade to set it. But those are beautiful. You can also use a cream blush as a lip product as well. Um, they're that kind of balmy feeling to it so it just leaves kind of like a lip stain or balm to the lip so it's a nice if you're into more of a neutral natural girl look um with lip products your lip liner your lipsticks your lip gloss they do not need to be expensive babes they don't have to be expensive you do not need to go and purchase a dior lip gloss because you saw it on somebody on youtube or instagram you know, sometimes they're cute collector items, but you do, like, I, I have Dior, I have YSL, and my Maybellines work just as well. Like, there's the drugstore when it comes to lip glosses and lip products. The girls have started to step their games up in that area. Not so much with foundation, but they have the lip products. Um, get you some lip liners. A basic lip liner is a good brown or brown that will look nice on your skin tone so if you're fair to medium to dark you want something that kind of coordinates your natural lip color especially if it's a lighter shade that you're going to be using so that you don't look um casket sharp is to line your lips with a brown lip liner or darker color then put in that lighter color especially if you're my ladies who are in the medium to darker area or if you feel fair skin if you want a more ombre look you can go that route but a brown for me, like any really brown, would be fine. You can even use a um, eyeliner that's a brown. Like you don't have to get a product that's designated lip liner, um, and they don't have to be expensive. The more you get comfortable, then you might want to say go to Mac. I still feel Mac has some of the best lip liners, bar none. Right after that would be Makeup Forever, even though I feel they've fallen off. They're they're pinnacle of greatness but they make some beautiful liners that are just amazing and they long lasting so with lipsticks lip glosses again they don't need to be expensive either try different colors and the beauty of going drugstore it means you don't have to like blow a bag on it to try something new 
um, for your different skin tones, a red lip is going to be powerful for any woman, but every red lipstick isn't for you based on your skin tone. For the longest, I couldn't stand red until I got a blue base red. And that typically is a universal, perfect red for everybody, for the most part. Uh, but once I got into that blue base red, it was like, it was over. I don't like orangey reds. I don't like uh, reds with pink undertones or any of that. It needs to be a true blue base red. It makes the teeth look whiter. It just makes me look amazing. It is a classic look. So... But you, for you to, for you sort of spending up a lot of money on getting higher end products, you need to know what works for you. And the easiest way is to go drugstore. You know they'll do buy one get one half off, buy one get one free, rack it up, and go nuts. So that is the number four and five thing you need for a basic product. Right. And the number six thing that you need for a basic beauty routine is going to be your tools. So I wouldn't count them as a product per se, but you need something to apply what you've bought. Um, I know some people are big about using their fingers. I'm someone who, um, it might be the sensory issues of autism. I don't like using my fingers for anything makeup wise except to um, warm up concealer if necessary. But even then I'm getting up and washing my hands. I don't like things on my fingers. But for some girls, they don't mind using their hands. They can really get in there uh, because the warmth of the fingertips melts that found that product in like their foundations, their cream shadows and blushes into the skin really well. But your powder products, you're going to need some sort of brush or powder puff to apply in order to get that precision the way you want it to go. Um, you do not have to purchase the most expensive brushes out there. To me, a basic beginner brush brand is going to be the Real Technique brushes. You can get them at Ulta. Um, I want to say certain drugstores are carrying the Target carries them. Like, you can get you a face set and an eye set and you're good. They clean very easy. Please clean your brushes on a weekly to bi-weekly basis um, so that you keep germs and all other things away from your face so that you don't have acne and all that stuff. I've, I have talked to people who have never washed their brushes before and they wonder why they have a slew of skin issues. That's why. But I digress. But you do not have to be expensive with your brushes. Um, I feel like I have a few more higher end brushes just because my former makeup artist days and I just kind of inherited those in when I depleted my kit. But if I didn't have that I still beat my face with my Real Technique brushes. Um, my e.l.f. brushes are another ones that are like three, four dollars. I like the pro version, so they're in the black. Um, they're in a black package. Their whole handle is black. I like those really well. They last a while. Um, I bought those because I used to travel a bunch, and the last thing I wanted to do was to keep my. I uh, wanted to keep my more expensive brushes at home and away from the pesky TSA people touching my stuff. So you don't have to blow bags on brushes, um, but if you, if you clean them regularly, you take care of them, they will last you some years um, and it will get you again comfortable. Now, once you're comfortable putting on makeup on a regular basis, if you want to invest in some nice like, actual hair brushes, go for it. They are a beautiful treat to have, but they are not a must have when you are creating your beauty routine. So I hope these things were helpful. Um, the main focus that you would say split your splurging or you're putting money into is going to be your complexion. It just makes everything better and it just layers. Like it's a good foundation. Everything else you do from there, it just kind of layers up and it just makes everything great. But a full face, you could very easily apply light foundation light concealer or if you're really light nice skin without a bunch of hyperpigmentation to hide or maybe just a little you can just use your concealer to cover up those areas that you want to conceal and maybe use a little bit under the eye to wake it up a little bit throw on some mascara throw on some gloss brush your brows you know you can use a clear mascara to brush or even take a spoolie and some hairspray and brush your brows up to hold them and you're out the door like it can be that simple throw a little highlight on if you want to 
but it doesn't have to be a crazy amount of products. You don't need drawers and drawers of products because I'll be really honest, most people don't use a fourth of what they have. Like at all. I've actually pared my 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 little collection down a lot and I am using now most of everything because I've really streamlined it to the best of the best that I have and there are things that they're the best of the best. These are things I was constantly gravitate towards. Constantly could see a need. Oh, I want to do a color look of this. Okay, this comes into play. But in lip products, like I'm just picky about those things. I don't like having a bunch of stuff that just collects dust. Like I'm not someone who likes to have a makeup collection. I actually like a actively used actual set of products that enhance, that make me look good, make me look pretty, like that do what I want it to do. So if this video was helpful, leave me some comments below. If there are some tips and tricks that you have, also leave those below. Let's connect and share together. If you're new here, hello and welcome. If you're returning, hey babe, how you doing? Um, if you're not a subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And don't be rude. Share this video with a friend. And until next time, keep it cute.